everybody, this is Mark and welcome to another installment of my desk side talks. I'm just going to talk about a few of the games I've been playing, some fun announcements about what's coming up with The Thoughtful Gamer, starting with some announcements. So as you probably know, we went to PAX Unplugged last year and we are definitely returning this year. So if you are a fan of the show and want to stop by and say hi, uh, I should be wearing a Thoughtful Gamer t-shirt all or most of the time. Say hi if you see me or if you want to meet up and try to play a game, maybe we can make that happen. But uh, I definitely want to say hi to people who are fans of the show while there, so don't be shy. I will also be staying in Philadelphia for a couple of days after the show for a couple of reasons, but I will have a couple of days in Philadelphia without any concrete plans at the moment. So if you are from the area, if you know board game things to do in Philadelphia, I would like to see if I could check out uh, what's going on there. So comment below, message me, email me, let me know if you have any fun ideas of what I could do that is board game related in Philadelphia. Board game cafes, interesting places to go that are game related, stores I should check out, that kind of thing. I would love to kind of experience the city since I have the opportunity. Finally, in terms of announcements, I have thought a little bit into the future about what I would like to do in 2019 with The Thoughtful Gamer. I always want to try to change it up a little bit each year, try some things, and the idea I had for 2019 is to have each month centered around a particular theme or concept. That doesn't mean that everything that will be released in that month will be around that concept, but I would like to have at least one or two articles slash reviews and one of the podcasts in each month to be around about that idea. So a couple of the ones I've come up with are the games of Vital Lacerda, uh, 4X games, Hex Encounter games, but I want to hear what you guys think. So, again, comment, email, go on social media, contact me, send me ideas of what you would like to see the Thoughtful Gamer highlight in one of the months of 2019. I'd be very interested. It could be a, a game genre, a particular designer, a, a more nebulous concept, just something that we could dig our teeth into, play, review, and discuss. I, I really like the idea of doing more thematic or conceptual stuff uh, in 2019 rather than just uh, whatever I've been playing recently or what, what review copies I've gotten in. Again, this will probably inform maybe a third of what happens or a quarter of what happens overall with The Thoughtful Gamer in 2019, but I do want to have those month-by-month -month focuses. Let's talk about some games. Uh, there are three games I've been playing over the last couple of weeks that I want to highlight. I haven't reviewed them yet, though I will be reviewing them at some point uh, in the near future. The first is the two new editions of Brass. So we have, and I always get these mixed up, there's Brass Birmingham and Brass uh, Lancashire. And I can't remember which one is the original, but I've played both the original. I think the original is... is I can't remember. The original one, which got new art, new update, I think a couple of rule changes, but not a whole lot. And then the new one, which is largely the same game, I would say 70% the same game, but adds a new map and some different variations on the theme set up in Brass. Brass is a classic. I haven't played a lot of Martin Wallace games. This is only the second one of his I've played besides London, I believe. And we are absolutely loving both of them. Right now, I think I prefer the original one a bit more. It's a bit more streamlined, but it does things with economic systems and markets that are just really, really nicely done. I've been describing it to people as kind of the next step past Power Grid, where Power Grid, you're working with a market of commodities that increase or decrease in price as people buy them. And that's one of the fundamental aspects of the game. Brass does the same thing, but players can also supply those commodities. So a large part of the game is being an entrepreneur and seeing into the future and determining what 
people will be demanding in the future. It's really, really nicely done. There's map elements with blocking and such. It's played over kind of two phases where you kind of play the same game twice, but with slightly different rules and slightly different changes in the game. It's wonderfully strategic, and every time I play it, it keeps shooting up my list of of honestly favorite games of all time. So hopefully I'll get to a review of that. I would kind of like to play enough so that I could review both of them in the same week maybe do one on monday one on friday but we'll see everyone in the group seems to love the game so i think we're going to be playing it quite a bit the other game i've been playing recently is a kickstarter game called spqf this was kind of a a smaller kickstarter but i got in on it and it is a small deck building game that's honestly very similar to eminent domain which i reviewed recently in terms of the way it does its primary actions, but it's it's more streamlined than that. How it works is that there are five, I believe five plus a wild symbols that are kind of the suit of your various cards. And like a deck builder, you'll draw five of them or like most deck builders. But in this one, you can only play one card. However, if you play cards of the same suit alongside of it, it'll boost that action usually. And then other players can play cards of the same suit in in response to get a smaller version of that action, which is, again, very basically identical to how Eminent Domain works with its roles. And then you're building up various engines in, in getting new cards. You're actually forced to take a new card each turn, which is something you don't see a lot with a deck building game. Uh, so it forces you to really manage your deck precisely, much again like Eminent Domain uh, in a lot of deck builders. But this one, because you're taking a card each turn, you have to really concentrate on making sure your deck is doing uh, what you want it to do rather than just random things. And it's pretty good. It seems like there's a good potential. Right now, it's just it was just the Kickstarter. A couple of the designers' previous games that weren't quite as successful as this one on Kickstarter got publisher contracts after the fact, and I'm sure he's looking for that kind of thing with SBQF. So it, it, at some point in the future, it should be available to the public, I hope, uh, because it's a pretty good game. It's, again, streamlined, plays pretty quickly, and the more I play it, the more I'm getting a better understanding of the the little nuances of the different symbols uh, and what kind of actions they typically enable or encourage. It's not the greatest game I've ever played, but for a little shorter, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, if you're playing four players card game, uh, I'm enjoying it. That's SPQF. The final game... And probably the most interesting one that I've played recently is Innovation. Now, if you're a avid reader of the reviews at thethoughtfulgamer.com, you'll know that I played it for the first time probably over a year ago at a board game cafe uh, on a day where we went to a cafe and just tried to play some new games and had a miserable time. I did not like it at all. It was my second Carl Chuddock game, uh, other than Matanai, which I really don't know what I think of. And I know his games are known for having a large amount of variance and kind of snowballing strategies. His games are, are really wild, and, and a lot of people like that. In Innovation, the first time I played, Matt stumbled upon a strategy that snowballed ridiculously. He was getting level nine cards while I was stuck at level two, and it was just a horrible time, and I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't have prevented it or done anything about it. Thankfully, Matt thought the game was interesting, so he ended up picking up a copy a little while ago, and I got to play a couple more times recently because, you know, it's it's a well-regarded game. I wasn't going to give up on it quite that easily. I was going to give it another shot. And playing it again, I'm finding that I actually really enjoy it. I think what I missed the first time is that it's a, it's a tableau-building game, and there are various symbols that you that you generate with your tableau and the main a main aspect of the game is that you're in an arms race with all of those different symbols and you have to keep pace with your opponent with those symbols while being able to convert 
your cards and your selections and your actions into points at the same time because keeping pace with with the symbols doesn't give you points necessarily but it helps your engine but you're kind of doing two things at once it's almost it's almost similar to through the ages where you have to keep up with military you have that kind of cold war arms race thing but that doesn't necessarily give you points it's other things that will give you points that win the game but you also have to prevent being smashed down because you haven't built up your army enough so you know they're both civilization games and i'm sure there was a little bit of inspiration there when when chuck was making innovation I really, really am starting to enjoy it, and I want to play it more uh, a few more times before I get a review app, but I'm, it might end up getting a really high score, which is surprising. I usually, on a first impression of a game, I usually don't change my score that much. It'll maybe, on a, you know, on a 1 to 10 scale, it might change within a point or two. After my first play of Innovation, I think I gave it like a 3 out of 10. I was really mad at it, and I thought, you know, maybe I would never like a Carl Chudik game, but now... I'm thinking, you know, it could go up to eight, eight and a half. Like I'm, I really enjoyed the two plays of it I played recently and I'm excited to explore the cards a bit more. Uh, so those are kind of three little previews of things I'll be reviewing within the next month or two, probably. And three interesting games. Uh, Brass, I think, is going to be long-term one of our favorite Euro games. Innovation will be a fun one to play. It's, it, I haven't played multiplayer, but I've heard it's, it's really just best at two player, which, makes sense to me. SPQF is, a, is an interesting one. It's a novelty. I don't know. Right now, it's kind of, do I like it better than Eminent Domain because they're so similar? I think I probably give the edge to SPQF just because it's a bit more streamlined and Eminent Domain has a bunch of idiosyncratic elements that I don't particularly love, although it's a bit more you have a little bit more control over your deck. And when in with both of those games, having very precise control over your deck is a major aspect of the game. Eminent Domain enables that more, whereas it's a bit more of a struggle with SPQF. But I might like that a bit better. I gotta play it a couple more times before I make that comparison and see which one I like best and kind of settle on a resolution for that uh, comparison. But we'll see. We've got lots of good stuff coming up for The Thoughtful Gamer. Again, let me know if you have any ideas of places I, could shoot, I should go to or check out in Philadelphia. And let me know if you have any interesting ideas for themes slash concepts I could do for a month in 2019. I really want to hear your feedback. So again, you could go on social media. You can email me mark at the thoughtful gamer.com. That's mark spelled with a C or leave a comment below. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out the website. Don't forget to rate and review this podcast. And if you would like to give us some support and get in on our Discord community, be able to watch our main podcast recordings live and get all kinds of other fun bonuses, go to patreon.com slash the thoughtful gamer. I greatly appreciate any and all help that you can give in terms of keeping this podcast and the thoughtful gamer going. We got some more goals up on the Patreon uh, at $200 and then at $500. I would love to be able to hit those sometime within the next few months. Thanks for listening, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>